brace yourself because Naptown Tuner here is about to unleash another groundbreaking, historic making 2.0T content video. This time it's about the vacuum pump system. The vacuum pump system, it's a little bit mysterious. We're running engine vacuum on the entire engine. That has nothing to do with the vacuum pump, but this engine has an auxiliary vacuum pump to run the brake booster and to pull some emission vapors from the fuel tank and to work the intake butterfly flaps that open up to help the RPM range and such. Uh, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother topic. I'm gonna be deleting those flap systems in my new build with the IE intake manifold that's gonna be delivered tomorrow. Let's just get into this video. Here we go, folks, pulling up on my personal work wagon here with the 2.0 T installed. I've got a heat blanket on my turbocharger. Anyway, uh, what I'm talking about is this vacuum pump back here. The thing bolted to the back of the engine is a vacuum pump and it's pulling vacuum for your brake booster. I should have a clamp right here. I usually put at least a zip tie there, but you know, safety first. Should have clipped that zip tie too. I'm a hack. Anyway, this is my personal vehicle. So what I'm talking about is this vacuum pump back here. It pulls a vacuum for your brake booster back here to help assist your power brakes. It also has a hose that goes and splits off back here. This is where it pulls the vacuum from, that nipple right there. And it pulls some emissions from your fuel tank right here. And it also comes back on this other side and it helps pull this diaphragm right here. See the diaphragm? It goes down this long shaft and operates the intake runners. And the vacuum hose plugs into here, the short hose, and then it operates it electronically. Sometimes that mechanism right there goes bad. In my experience, it's pretty rare, but the fix is to replace the entire manifold. But I do have a runner flap fold on this vehicle, so we'll get into that. But I want to completely redo the breather system on my performance build. I'm getting this IE intake manifold and all this other kind of stuff. That's why I'm scrutinizing this stuff. So. Now let's get into it. I'm about to show you the vacuum pump off the vehicle, how it operates, what it does, how it gets oil, all that. But first we're gonna talk about this. This is your camshaft tray, or otherwise it would have been the valve cover and then each one of these individual journals would have been an individual cap. But they tried to make this engine as module as possible so, like they're trying to keep it as streamlined as possible, for instance, like the newer generation, even after this, doesn't even have a turbo manifold. It's built into the cylinder head. I could show you that, but I don't want to get too off topic. So, if you're doing service to this thing, if you're taking this camshaft tray off, you see how you have all this crud here? That's left over from the anaerobic sealer. And you're going to scrape that off very carefully with a very thick, sharp razor blade, not those uh, rectangle ones, but the ones that are uh, obtuse uh, saber tooth type, the ones that are thicker and have the little triangles at the end. So let me just show you. These are the razor blades you're gonna be doing the scraping with and you wanna have the sharp ones when you're using aluminum, you can't just use the same old one over and over, it gets nicks in it and then it can scratch the aluminum surface. So that to say this, the oiling that goes to this vacuum pump is fed through this hole right here. These two holes right here are the return for the oil. Let's show you the path. Here we have the vacuum pump. This is the front side of the vacuum pump. This is what bolts to the engine. The back of the camshaft goes in here. So the back of the camshaft is spinning this vacuum pump right here. And we'll flip it over and show you how this works. But 
it's a it's a square lobe right here and it's pushing this follower in thousands of times this is what this follower looks like it's got a roller on it the previous generation did not have a roller it was just a plunger type and it would wear out and wear through and then the the high pressure fuel pump shaft would uh, gouge itself into the camshaft and then you'd have to take it all apart and replace the camshaft the follower and the pump and you'd have to drop the oil pan and clean out the metal out of the oil pan and even after that happened it's still never as good as before shredding metal in your engine so you want to keep up with that but you don't have to worry about that on this generation engine starting in 2009 because this has never been a problem with this roller follower so it only goes in one way with that notch but I normally always suggest taking this pump off before you take the vacuum pump off because it's going to be spring loaded and it's going to shoot back out. You, you won't lose it. It'll stay in there, but you're still going to have to take this off before you put the vacuum pump back on because this is all the way extended now and there's no way you can push this spring back in. So it has to come out regardless and it's easier to take it out in the car or on the engine than it is. Now you have to take it out with an impact or hold this because these are in there pretty tight. Anyway, where was I? The, the camshaft is a square lobe uh, and it rotates this vacuum pump as well. The vacuum is created on the back side. This is just where it rotates it from the front side. And then the vacuum is going to be pulled on this nipple right here. And then you see this actually slides on to your rear coolant outlet housing. And then you got a plug on there in the back of the engine. And then this part goes to a diaphragm on your heater core, your heater line hose i'll show you would you look at that mine broke i was being rambunctious with it probably and threw it to the side we'll make another video out of that by itself and i'll take it off and show you what's going on with it this is an example of just a scrap head that i'm going to throw away but let's say you're doing service on this thing you're trying to reseal your camshaft tray or maybe you're putting a new camshaft in, or maybe you're replacing some rocker arms, or maybe you're replacing a valve spring, or who knows what. Maybe, maybe you're doing too much and you're taking it off when you don't need to, and you're just trying to do a timing chain or something. Don't, don't take this off if you're trying to do a timing chain. But uh, you see, if you're trying to scrape this stuff off, you see how difficult that can be? You see how I dropped some crud down in the engine it's pretty hard to scrape this crud off and contain it you can do a little bit better job on these edges because you can scrape it inward like such like so but it's pretty difficult stuff to get loose and then this stuff can clog up your screens and whatnot if you just willy-nilly let it get up into your engine and by the time it's in there this this has got an oil film on it it's going to stick there it's going to be really difficult to get this stuff out what are you going to do wash it down in the pan you have to get it before it goes inside the engine so i prefer to have a vacuum in one hand and a razor blade in the other and just very carefully scrape it and suck it out at the same time but I'm about to show you how it can clog this screen. Of course, everything is supposed to go down through the oil pump and then through the oil filter before it gets to places like this. But like earlier, I showed you where it comes out of the back of the cylinder head, the oil pressure. It goes into this tiny screen right here. And I sometimes find this screen clogged with, with garbage. You really want to make sure that this screen is installed and it didn't pop itself out and then you put this thing back in without it. Because not only is this a very fine screen on this side, but it's got a restrictor port right there. It's a super tiny port. If you, you can barely see through it. It might have been clogged with oil, but you see through it there now. So if you just leave that open, the only thing restricting the oil pressure at that point is what it's going through. It's bearing or, or such. Where does the oil pressure go? Well, let's flip it upside down and see how the oil, the vacuum pump actually works. This is the back side of the vacuum pump. These three big bolts right here, what takes the pump off and these three smaller bolts right here, 
you shouldn't ever need to take those off. I've never actually taken this back cover off, but now I'm doing a lot of different things. And let's investigate how this pump actually works. It's a little bit tricky to get in here and spin this thing by hand, but if you'll notice, this bar is sitting there and just going nuts back and forth. I could sit here and watch this all day. It's just, whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's where your vacuum comes from. You see how it has ports right here? And uh, it's pulling and pushing with this. And this is kind of, this is like a, a Mazda rotary engine or something. You got your apex seals right here. And then you got this big heavy thing right here. This is, this goes back and forth just a little bit to stay centered in your camshaft, the back of your camshaft. And where does the oil pressure go? The oil pressure comes out through that port right here. And then there's a little bit of a channel for it in here. So that's all the way at the very end. So it looks like, it looks like that port right here goes right into that channel. And then if you'll notice, there's another channel in there at the top. So some of that oil can get pulled in here and it looks like how it spins, it, whatever oil gets in here, it looks like it washes in right here. So that there's a little bit of oil constantly getting in here for those seals to rotate in. And uh, also, there's got to be some of this oil coming out through this backside here. And how it gets through a little bit is I know for sure that this channel is letting oil pressure come in here and then it's getting pushed in here. Let's go ahead and take this off now. This is a reed valve. The first plate right here is just kind of like a cover plate and then below it is like a reed valve similar to what you'd find in like a two-stroke lawnmower or uh, a two-stroke uh, dirt bike or something like that. Some of the smaller two-stroke engines have a completely different carburetor but you see how it's like a reed valve here. It's a very small thin valve that it's designed to operate one way. It will, it will open up like this, but it typically stays closed otherwise. So some of that oil gets in here and it splashes around in here. And that's what lubricates this roller right here. So not very much oil is getting in through there because it's just what comes in through that little flap and then wrote. So this thing doesn't seem like it's getting very much oil is what I'm saying. Let's, let's imagine that this screen is blocked. You got this screen all the way blocked. Well, you're messing up your vacuum pump seals. Your vacuum pump, that, that, that bar that's sitting there going nuts in there, back and forth and all over the place, this actually, it's, plas it's like some kind of really hard plastic, but it needs to get lubrication, otherwise it's just scraping stuff. And then you're not getting lubrication to your shaft in your high pressure fuel pump and good high pressure fuel pumps cost over $300. So there's little holes in here that allow the oil to get back into that high pressure fuel pump. Let's show you that right here. We got one and the oil can get back there to that seal. And that seal is what goes bad behind that spring. Well, let's just go ahead and pop this out real quick because it's never really a good idea to pop this plunger out because there's never a need for it because it's probably not a good idea to put it back in once you've pulled it out. But there's a seal in there, and then whenever that seal goes bad, and then whenever it's not properly lubricated, I don't know why there's a little bit of grease in there, I might have done that. Um, but when that seal goes bad, I think I was playing with it to see if I could lubricate the seal again. But uh, anyway, that's when the oil leaks past that seal and then into your engine. And then that's why you've got a different kind of vacuum system. Vacuum pressure is in your whole entire engine. So I'll brush on that really quick. Since 
the vacuum from the intake manifold is, and I can't get into too much in this video, the vacuum from your intake manifold is pulling through the breather module and it's pulling a vacuum on your entire crankcase rather than just your intake manifold to the traditional style. And that way, if this high pressure fuel pump fails and you get some oil ingressing into your uh, oil and diluting your oil, then your emission system can see that uh, it's burning oil out or burning some fuel outside of its parameters and it, it'll show a ridge fault. And I've got videos on that. And it's usually every single time a ridge fault is always this high pressure fuel pump with a leaky seal. So what else? So for my performance build, I wanna block off the oil pressure feed to this and figure out a different oiling solution for my high pressure fuel pump. And uh, I wanna delete the vacuum pump. I wanna, I wanna take this out altogether, this big heavy piece of metal. I wanna take out the vacuum pump system on the backside. I wanna run my vacuum booster off my engine vacuum like traditionally. And uh, I want to do some other modifications too, but I can't say too much. You just have to watch and see what I end up doing. Naptown Tuner, go ahead and subscribe.